Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our presentation on Excelsius. Um, if you have any questions at all during the presentation, there's a little button you can press at the bottom and post your questions, and then we'll answer them at the end. And I'll hand you over to um, Alex Watson, who will be running the webinar. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the intro there, Simon. So today we're going to be talking about Excelsior, Excelsius as a flexible platform for reaction optimization. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is Excelsius? Excelsius is a 10 position reaction station capable of independent temperature control in all 10 positions. We have a huge temperature range from minus 20 all the way to 150. And with independent control, we could have one vial at, at minus 10 and the other at 140 with no problems. We also have independent stirring in all 10 vials. So at its heart, Excelsius is a 10 in one reactor capable of replacing 10 heating cells, ma mantles, cooling baths, stirrers, all in one compact solution. So this is what sets Excelsius apart, its technical specifications. So it's a really compact module. We, we're made up of a reaction module and a control module and a 10 inch terminal. What we can do is stack these terminals, um, stack these modules so that we use up less space in the fume cupboard. And we can also use this outside of a fume cupboard um, if we're using samples that suit. We're able to heat and cool really rapidly. So we have a heating rate of 48 degrees a minute. And this means that we can go from minus 10 to 100 degrees in as little as three minutes. Same story with the cooling. We can go from 100 to minus 10 in just five minutes. Due to really sensitive sensors in all 10 of our reaction cells, we have really high temperature accuracy and stability. So we have a stability of 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. And this is particularly useful in certain applications such as crystallization studies. As mentioned, we have full control of stirring in all 10 cells, ranging from zero to 1,500 RPM. Applications. So Excelsius suits a huge range of applications and essentially any process that involves heating or cooling. It's proven very popular in academia and industry, especially with CDMOs and CMOs. Some of our main applications include design of experiment. We're using the same reaction, but modifying the um, parameters in 10 different cycles all at once. We can carry out parallel synthesis, reactant optimization, drug discovery and API synthesis, crystallization and solubility studies, flow chemistry, um, filtration, AP uh, and scale up optimization. So I've given a little bit of an intro there. Um, and next, I want to talk about how we actually achieve this. Um, so I'm going to start with the hardware. So on the top right of your screen, um, you can see the reaction module. So this is composed of acid resistant PTFE. And we have the connection inlets at the back there um, numbered with the green numbers. And we can see our 10 reaction cells in the circles. So each of these reaction cells is made up of a Peltier module. You can see in your bottom right of your screen there. So this Peltier module is capable of carrying out really efficient heating and both cooling. So depending on the direction in which an electrical current travels through this module, we're able to heat or cool. We have sensors in each of the individual modules, which is continuously uh, monitoring the temperature of the heating jacket. Uh, and there, the system is completely PID controlled, and it, this is what enables us to get really excellent temperature stability. External thermocouples. So these are a really um, useful accessory that most of our um, customers like to use. So sample heating and cooling is dependent on a number of factors, including the thermal capacity of your sample and the actual volume that you're using. And this is often overlooked. There's always going to be a disparity between your heating element jack temperature and your sample temperature. So with these external uh, flexible thermocouples, we connect them to the back of our module. If you look at uh, number eight on the figure at the bottom there, um, each one of those inlets represents a cell. We connect our thermocouple here and we push them through a rubber septum in the lid of our vial. This maintains the seal while allowing the thermocouple to be within the sample. Um, so this means that during our reactions, we're getting a real time value of both the temperature of the jacket and the sample temperature. It also provides us with a delta T or in other words, the difference between the temp the difference in temperature change between the, the sample volume and the temperature of the jacket. So using Delta T, we can then adjust the ramping rates to suit the thermal capacities of each of your samples. 
So to match the individual needs of each lab, uh, we have a range of, of available vials. So we have two materials, glass or PTFE vials. With the PTFE vials, um, they are 30 mil. And with the glass vials, they're available in both five and 30 mil. You can see our 30 mil vials at the top there uh, and our five mil vials beneath. You'll notice that the five mil vials um, have a narrower base. So in order to maintain good conductivity between the heating jacket and the sample, we use a metal adapter, as you can see in the rings in the bottom of the picture. So all we have to do is place these adapters in each of the reaction cells, and then we um, place our vial in there, and there's really good connection and good heating control. Using the tool, uh, we can simply just pull these out when we're ready to use the 30 mil vials instead. So these two vials give us a working range of 0 0.5 mils all the way up to 30 mils. And we have magnetic fleas, um, larger and smaller for both of these um, variations that enable a really effective stirring. I also wanted to talk about the terminal. Um, so this is a 10 inch, um, really bright touchscreen display with high resolution. It's glove sensitive uh, and it can be operated within or outside the fume cupboard. The extendable power cord uh, enables you to take it out the fume cupboard and completely control all of the reactions without having to open the fume cupboard. Um, we use a Windows 10 operating system, so it's really easy to use. It's intuitive uh, and, and it learns from how you use it. So we're going to cover the operating system and, and the software in the next few slides. So we have two principal modes of operation with Excelsius. Um, isothermal methods and ramp cycles. First, I'm going to cover isothermal methods. So on the left, you can see our um, starting screen for Excelsius. Here you can see all 10 cells and the temperature in which they're currently at. This gives us mass control of all cells. We can start or stop all cells at once, or we can use the, the green triangles on the side to start and pause each individual cell. On the right, you see our isothermal uh, parameter setter. So here, we're simply inputting the temperature of the jacket, um, the ramp speed, um, stirring, and time. We can then use the numbers on the left and right side of the screen to apply this method to multiple cells. And then it's all a case of pressing OK and starting your method. Secondly, uh, we have the ramp cycles. So here on your screen, you can see a basic ramp. And all these numbers can be modified. So we can modify the stirring at each stage, the time of each stage, and the temperature at each stage, as well as the number of cycles. Although this is showing a increase in temperature, we could also modify the ramp so that our whole temperature is below our start temperature. We can also save ramp cycles. So if you see the, the button at the bottom there saying catalog, this is our ramp catalog. We can save methods that we would like to use in the future here, and we can then simply press on them and apply them for future use. Um, exporting data. So this is a really, a really um, strong factor with Excelsius. Um, so we have simultaneous data logging for all 10 of the reaction cells throughout the reaction. And we have continuous measurement of jacket temperature, sample temperature, if we're using external thermoprobes, uh, the set temperature or target temperature, and the time. So you can see um, the graph on the right there. This is what you'd be able to see uh, mid um, ramp cycle. So as you can see, we're about at the minute, uh, minute and a half um, time point. We've, uh, you can see your red trace is your jacket temperature and it's following the set temperature of our ramp uh, with the different color coded stages of the ramp. So data, data recording is excellent. Um, so we need to be able to export this and actually use it in the real world setting. So we have multiple export options. We can export directly as an Excel sheet. Um, and this way you can open this directly in Excel uh, and you're ready to do what you want with it. We can export as a CSV file or as a graphic representation uh, via PDF. So rather than exporting by Excel and then making the graph yourself, you can export a graph very similar to the one that's on the screen now. Uh, you can modify this using the software and then this is ready to go. Um, also, as we're using Windows 10, what you can do is you can save it directly to the system in a folder, and then you can access it, access all runs at a later date. So I just wanted to use this point to give us a bit of an overview of the hardware and software. 
Um, so Excelsius, is, it's a really rugged system with superior performance. We have independent control in all cells for temperature and stirring. We can reach wide range of temperature, minus 20 to 150, and we have rapid heating and cooling rates and exceptional temperature stability. We have complete data collection uh, methods and we're able to export these really easily. Um, the reaction cell itself has a really long lifetime. It's uh, ergonomic and has a small footprint um, within or outside of your fume cupboard. We have a really intuitive and user-friendly interface um, and we have the options of using within the fume cupboard, stacked or separate, or outside of the fume cupboard. So what really sets Excelsior apart and, and modifies it to your certain need is the accessories that we add on. We have a huge range of, of accessories. Um, I'm gonna cover a few of them today um, and cover the main ones. So our most popular accessory and often comes uh, uh, with the system is the reflux condenser block. So this unit sits directly above our reaction module and simply we're, we're fitting the vials through this and then into the reaction module. You can see an inlet and outlet for our chiller or our coolant line. So this is just cooling the top bit of our um, vials. And what this does is it prevents condensation of air humidity and um, prevents evaporation losses of low boiling point solvents. And it's particularly useful if you're using uh, very low volume samples. You don't want to lose this all to the vapor phase. Secondly, we have our inert workstation. Um, so when you want to uh, work uh, under inert atmosphere and you don't want to individually inertize your, your vials, we can inert all of them at once using um, our five port caps connected in series. So here we're using a three-way valve um, and, it's, and we're using a vacuum and inert gas supply. We can use any inert gas, but typically we use nitrogen. So by cycling between vacuum to inert, we're firstly um, vacating all the atmospheric air from the vials and then replacing it with inert gas. So we cycle between these two um, for a few minutes, uh, a couple of times. Um, and after this, we've proven that there's an inert atmosphere in all 10 vials. Then we can simply just lift the top plate. So that brown bit you can see with the, with the vials hanging on, that lifts off the base and that will fit directly into our reaction module. Um, how you carry on from this is then up to you. Um, a lot of people like to keep their inert gas um, connected and throughout their reaction have nitrogen continuously flowing through all 10 vials and on the outlets that have that connected to a gas bubbler. This way they can actually visualize that inert gas is continuously flowing through the vials and that we have an inert atmosphere. Here's our filtration sti stick. So this makes filtrations a lot easier. So after you've completed a reaction, um, we simply draw up via this through this filtration stick uh, and we will um, take the, the liquid phase and leave any solid particulates behind in the vial for cleaning. This is our pressurized reactor. So this enables reactions up to 15 bar. Um, it's handy for reactions that need a little bit of help and pressure to, to occur. We have a reaction volume of 0 0.5 mils up to 10 mils, uh, and we have a overpressure safety valve on the right. Right, uh, this will safely release excess pressure. Using, um, we we have a small inlet there for mid-reaction sampling. Um, so even when it's pressurized, we can sample from this um, to analyze uh, your reactant mixture. Um, using a three-way valve, we can also accommodate external thermocouples um, and to measure your actual temperature of the sample mid-run. This is our five port cap. So the five port cap is an, an exceptional accessory for boosting flexibility of the system. Uh, so this replaces the standard cap and essentially is just a cap with five modifiable inlets and outlets. So this enables you to customize your setup for your specific application. So for example, with a five port cap, we could have direct temperature reading via our thermocouple in one inlet. We could be um, cycling in an inner atmosphere um, in, in series or just bubbling with inert gas. Um, we could sample mid run and we could also use flow chemistry and have our reactions flowing from vial to vial. Um, next, I have a short video that I wanted to use. So this just um, summarizes what we've talked about so far. 
uh, and nicely illustrates the flexibility of the five port caps. Um, I'm going to talk over it. Uh, it's only about a minute and a half. So here we see our main reaction block. Uh, we're a difference of vials. We have glass, PTFE, five or 30 mils. We use an external chiller, not to cool the sample, but to cool the inner um, Excelsius reaction block. There's a safety switch at 60 degrees, which will shut everything off if we do overheat, but this should never happen. Here we can see our Peltier module, uh, able of efficient heating and cooling. Here we can see that we're performing stirring and we're doing heating on the left and cooling on the right all at the same time. Next, we're putting on our reflux condenser block. So this sits, as I said, directly above the reaction module and our vials simply fit in. We could connect it to the pre-existing coolant line and use the same chiller for both. Now we're attaching our five port caps. Uh, here's our thermocouple going to the back. Simply places through the septum in our five port cap. It's now gonna give you an example of what you could use the five port cap for. So here we're adding an inert atmosphere or gas bubbling. And we're also performing flow chemistry and we're pushing the volume from one vial to the next. We could then use a syringe to sample uh, and analyze this liquid. As mentioned, here we can see that we have some ramps and isothermal methods. This is our ramp profile. We can see we're using an inverse ramp here. Finally, that's just the overview of the system. So I hope that gave you a better picture of the system and potential uses of the five port cap. This is our dosing module. Um, so this is an automated dosing station that is programmable within the software to, to dose at specific time points. So it's automated dosing and sampling. We can do this for time controlled quenching, solvent and dissolution studies, as well as exothermic reaction control. So a big focus of LabTech is that they wanna continuously release new accessories, opening the door for new applications. Some uh, applications that are so under work now, uh, primarily is our photochemistry probe, um, here, this would be programmable with the software, and we'll be able to measure this during the reaction, as well as a turbid turbidity probe that you can see on the right. So these are they'll be coming in the next um, few months, uh, and hopefully make a big application difference. Next, uh, I wanted to focus on um, the saving with Excelsius. It's a really efficient um, system, and there are good savings with it. Um, we do have a really handy return of investment calculator. Um, if you'd like to see this in action, please talk to one of our local reps uh, and we can assist in calculating this for your lab. So the idea of saving with Excelsius is that we're using one module to replace 10 heating cells, magnetic stirrers, ice baths, uh, and reflux condensers. So this saves not only in space, but in energy and carbon output. So with space, um, a classic approach, um, so just to have 10 heating cells, um, ice baths and stirrers. So this way you could only heat five different temperatures and cool to five different temperatures. Uh, we'd need at least three fume cupboards. With Excelsius, we're doing all of this and more in a, in a much more compact system. We could use a one, one fume cupboard and still have plenty more space to have other things in there. Next is energy. So with three fume cupboards, five hot plates, and five thermostatic baths, obviously we're gonna use a lot of energy. Um, so this is based on an eight hour day or eight hours of operation. Um, and you can see that the, the savings in energy wise is, is massive. Um, all, we got to, all we have to use is one fume cupboard, uh, Excelsius block, and an external chiller. So all in all, this results in an 86% reduction in energy consumption. So, Cutting down our energy has two effects, primarily carbon footprint. So just by switching to Excelsius, we're saving 11.1 tons of CO2 per year. It's a huge impact. Um, 
and because of this um, we're saving on energy costs so these these pricings are based on a few years ago we can uh, provide uh, updated uh, figures but it's looking between 20 to 30 thousand pound per year savings uh, using excelsis alone rather than um, 10 reaction blocks or um, cooling, cooling um, stations so to summarize um, Excelsius is a really innovative and, and precise reaction uh, workstation. Um, we have immense heating and cooling capabilities and we have fantastic control of each of these independently. It's a multi-application um, platform. We have a huge portfolio of accessories and newly launching accessories that, that open the door to new applications uh, that you can all do on one module. Um, it offers complete data collection and with that, really um, easy and intuitive data export. Um, it massively reduces your laboratory footprint in terms of size. Um, we can stack, we can work outside of a fume cupboard, we can work inside. Um, there's huge laboratory savings in terms of energy, uh, and this results in a saving of running costs, as well as cutting down our carbon footprint. So it's a really good way of future-proofing your lab uh, and streamlining your processes. So that brings our webinar to a close. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I believe Simon's still around to pass me any questions, um, but if not, I am. can get in touch via our website. Yeah, thanks very much, Alex. We've got three questions. Um, Perfect. First one is, will the photochemistry attachment allow for different wavelengths in each cell? We're not as sure yet. Uh, I know that, that, that we're, we're limited to one wavelength, but um, as soon as we do know, we can reach out. Um, so. Um, I will be in touch as soon as we know more on that. Okay, thanks. Um, secondly, can you plug this into a normal main socket or do I need anything special? And if so, how many sockets does it take? <laughs> so, yep, normal main socket. Um, we use one socket for the um, terminal reaction module and control module. Um, you'd need one more for your um, chiller and, and that's it. It would be placed in a fume cupboard. Um, so just two in total. Okay. The last question is, can you confirm you have different temperatures and stirring rates in each cell? Correct. So we have a temperature range of minus 20 to 150, and each cell can be anywhere within that range at any given time. So we can have one at 10 degrees, one at 150, one at minus five, all at the same time. And with that, we also have independent stirring control in all 10 vials from zero to 1,500 RPM. Okay, brilliant. Okay, and that's the end of the question. So if anybody has, has any more questions, if you email them to salesanalytics.co.uk, um, Alex will pick them up and answer them for you. Um, but I'd like to conclude and say thank you very much, Alex. That's a very good webinar. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.